Jennifer, welcome to today's card. A fun little birthday card for a two-year-old boy featuring an awesome T-Rex, because don't all boys love dinosaurs? Today's shape um, were cut out using the Silhouette Cameo. So anytime I design in Silhouette, I start out with what my finish size will be here. I just created a rectangle. I'm not going to cut that out with the Silhouette, but you can see it just helps me get the scale correct. So I drop in that uh, T-Rex resize them to fit on the card. I'm going to add my text with the word Rex in Phoenix Script FLF. Use the Merge tool and then the Rotate tool and just drop that right in on the T-Rex. And then I'm going to add my two and this is a font called Jurassic which looks just like Jurassic Park logo. Add that offset to create a shadow behind it and I'm ready to go. So I cut those out just of uh, Nina Solar White cardstock, and I'm going to go ahead and start on my base, my background. I'm using a Tim Holtz stencil called Rays, and starting with a little bit of scattered straw distress ink. Now, normally I would tape down my card and tape down my stencil, but I like to live dangerously, so I'm just holding this with my left hand and working with my right with the ink. Now, for this stencil, it is highly distressed so what that means at the base it's kind of hard to see in the video but it has a ton of little tiny pieces normally I'd work in a circular motion but if you do that with a stencil like this you easily bend or rip off those tiny little pieces and so I'm just kind of more using what I would say is a pouncing motion uh, just to add the color and it does take a little longer to build up the color that way but then I'm not ruining my awesome stencil once I've got that scattered straw down, I'm going to come back in with a little bit of spice marmalade near the base of the rays. And you can see again, just pouncing. So that's what it looks like. Totally happy with it. Just checking out how it looks behind my plain T-Rex. And then I'm going to add a little bit of ground line here using crushed olive and forest moss. Again, just using my ink blending tools starting off the craft sheet in that circular motion, just gradually building up the color and switching over to the forest moss. And this, when I do a darker color, a lot of times I just kind of start work from the edge on that one just to give it kind of a, um, a more visual interest for your eye. And again, just work slow, build those colors up. And then I'm going to go ahead and I think at this point ink up my T-Rex. I'm going to use the Lucky Clover and Peeled Paint. And I'm using the smaller uh, circular ink blending tool, which I really do prefer these, but I just don't have enough to match up with all of my ink colors at this time. So just being really careful around his little arms his little claws so that I don't rip any of those off, which I've done before. And his color, I'm not trying to make it super solid because I know that I'm going to come back in with that peeled paint and just, again, visual interest, not a solid color. And if you don't like working with the ink tools, you can absolutely um, cut this out of a colored cardstock. And now my word Rex, you can see right there, I'm just inking the little centerpiece to the E so that it mostly matches the T-Rex uh, body color. So I've switched over to the peeled paint. I really liked the way these two kind of went together, the Lucky Clover and peeled paint. And just kind of trying to focus on the areas that were a little bit lighter where the Lucky Clover wasn't as dark. And then I'm gonna set that aside and I decided to add a little bit of color to kind of the sky area of my background. So I'm using a little bit of stormy sky distressing. And again, that ink blending tool, just kind of lightly. Um, my end products, I decided to add uh, kind of some aging to it. So you don't really see that. And if I did it again, I might do that a little bit different, but I, I kind of like the little blue hint there. And so, it, as I said here, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of that antiquing to it. 
vintage photo and then on the very edges I'll do a little bit of walnut stain. Gives it just a little bit, again, visual interest and a little bit of age. And I love, love these distress inks and just the way that they blend together. And you can see just a little bit of walnut stain around the edges. Darkening it up. And then I did the same process on Rexy there. Just a little bit of the, the vintage photo. And this is a relatively small die, so you don't want to get like too heavy handed with it. Just kind of keeping those um, browns, that aging, just around the edges. In fact, you can see I've picked him up and just working with that walnut stain on the very, very edges. Again, just checking his placement. Then I decided to add some palm trees around the edges. This is a um, old stamp set from Waltzing Mouse, which actually doesn't exist anymore, but you could put anything you wanted there. Leaves, you could die cut, some punches, you could leave it plain. I just, uh, these happen to be the only palm trees that I had. So I'm gonna use my Misty there. This is a great tool, especially, I like this for any of the clear acrylic dies and the distressing. Sometimes you get a little beat up on the stamp itself and it doesn't stamp really clearly. What I love about this is everything stays in place so it gives you that option of stamping multiple times in the exact same area. And so I'm gonna just add those same trees on the left and then uh, I am inking this or stamping this with the black soot and then stamping again. Love it, great tool and love those palm trees. So again, just checking out my finished product. And then I'm gonna add, use just some, a little bit of splattering. This is called a marker spritzing tool. Now I purchased this from Stampin' Up! many years ago, but Tim Holtz uh, does carry one exactly like this. You just take the brush marker, in this case I'm using both vintage photo and brush corduroy, and that air forces past the marker and just creates kind of a splatter effect. And I'll show you this, it's a little hard to see on the video, but I will pick it up and so you can see just how those splatters look. It does take a little bit of trial and error to get your marker in exactly the right spot to get the look that you're going for, but super easy tool, really effective. You can see the splatters there. And then just uh, for a little more aging and distressing, just taking a little bit of water and throwing it on my card. I let it sit, since the background is pretty light colors, I just gave it some time for the water to react with the distressing. And I added a tiny piece of black cardstock behind my T-Rex there, you can see just to emphasize the lettering. I'm gonna take my shadow created um, in the silhouette using the offset tool, and I set the spacing to 0.05, so it's a really tight shadow. Just inking that up with the barn red. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I knew I was going to put the lettering right on top, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I use a Zig two-way glue pen. I love these for these fine details. It's uh, just like writing with a pen, super controlled, lets you get glue exactly where you want it and not all over the place. And then pick that up. I love, again, another tool that I really like are these uh, reverse tweezers by EK Success. Fantastic. I do use these when I make my uh, little toothpick dolls too because they are just so handy. Adding my lettering to the O. I had a little bit a piece where it didn't cut clearly, so just kind of picking that out with my tweezers and fingers. And finishing up the O there. Because I'd love to tell you that I'm a clean and neat crafter, but I am always getting glue all over the place. 
Now I'm going to put my Rex down and I'm going to use a different glue for this one. I am using the Scotch Quick Dry Glue. This is fantastic for these larger elements. So I just kind of put the glue on there, but I know I want to make sure that his little fingers and mouth are all well adhered. So I just use a tweezer or tweezer, a toothpick, excuse me, to kind of move that glue where I want it, but I want to make sure it doesn't ease out, eke out from underneath him, especially when you're using the Distress Ink markers because they're water uh, liquid reactive they can react to the adhesive if you get that everywhere which I know because I've done so. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just add some simple popped up to the back of my two there I cut one in half just since they're too large to fit there and I'm gonna add this to my card right where I want it. And then I've got like a matting sheet that I'm gonna do next. Again, just using that uh, Barn Red, just gonna ink right around the very edge of it. All right, j again, just going around the edge, since I the whole sheet won't show, you just need to focus on the edges. And you'll notice that this particular block for the ink blending tool does not have a handle. That's because my fabulous brother whipped a whole bunch of these up for me, just cut some wood, uh, sanded and then put a little bit of um, polyurethane on the, the backs um, so they work fantastic because you don't really use the handles anyway and now I've got that all inked and ready to go and uh, just applying a little bit of adhesive on the back of that and then this just goes on to a regular card base and he's all set. I feel like he turned out a little bit Hollywood. It looks sort of like something you'd see from a premiere or something, but really happy with him. Super fun, great birthday card, and you can totally do this. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys, and we'll have up some new videos soon.